The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Tuesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. we got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and you have a little bit of a mixed market action. S&P's in the positive by about 10 points. That's about two-tenths percent in the green this morning, trading at 55.13. NASDAQ 100, we're positive by about three-tenths percent, up 59 points, 19,268. The Dow slightly in the red this morning, off 40 points, one-tenth percent in the red, 40,731 in the futures. And the Russell up about a third of a percent, up seven points at 22.58. Bitcoin, quite a pullback from yesterday's highs. We almost hit 71,000 this morning. We're trading at 67,295 for Bitcoin. Crude, how about it, man? If you haven't filled up the gas tank, hold off, hold off, because prices are coming down, man. Yesterday, we were above 77.50. Today, we just traded to 74.75. We're down by 87 pennies on the session, trading at 74. That's a 74 handle, 74.97 for the price of crude. Gold contract up about $10 this morning, trading at 24.35 for the gold contract. We jump over to notes and bonds. A little bit of higher price, up by two ticks technically, but not quite at the highs of the session we saw yesterday morning when I was on the air. We were up at about 111.16. We're trading right now at 111.12 in the 10-year. The Fed begins their meeting today. Announcement 2 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow. I'll, all eyes will be on whether they signal the September rate cuts are coming down the line. Pretty much expected that's going to be the case. It'd be a surprise if that was not the case. The 30-year up by about nine ticks at 119.30 right now. We jump over to the dollar index, DXY. Dollar catching some strength. How about it, right? Now, interesting. We, we've had dollar strength. Gold holding up relatively well as we have the dollar trading at almost 104.80 right now. 104.75 the dollar up by about 18 pennies right now even with gold up about ten dollars interesting to see and even with yields backing off a little bit on that conversation as well and we kick it off with the headline why not investors on alert for fed signals of september rate cut so that's going to be the focus the article basically speaks for itself right the central bank is widely expected to hold the rate where it is right now between five and a quarter to 5.5. But you better be ready for them to indicate that they're coming in September, man, because that's the expectation. Uh, the market is pricing in between two, maybe even three cuts this year. It'd be a shocker if they don't begin tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern time. The policy statement is heavily debated by the 12 voting members. But yeah, um, Get ready, because it's coming, folks. Why are officials moving closer to cutting rates? Well, it shouldn't be surprising, folks. The, the, the data is not lining up with 5 and a quarter to 5.5 being necessary to be in a restrictive rate. And that's what you're going to hear. They're going to make the case that they can still be in a restrictive policy. They can ease a bit from where they are right now. And, yeah, you're going to see that happen at 2 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow. So we'll see where we go from there. All right, we kick things off with a little earnings this morning. We got Merck and Pfizer out with their numbers already. Merck, you pop higher to 130.50, but just like that, we're down about $5 from where we were pre-market. You were trading at 127.78 last night. You're trading at 122.80. They beat, but not quite the case. We'll go over it. Earnings may be a problem for them. Pfizer, not the case. They're trading higher. Pfizer comes in at 30.72. They're trading at 31.33, so they are higher on their numbers. And interesting, I went over yesterday. In terms of what was the biggest problem for equities when they came into earnings, the biggest problem for performance so far had been if you beat on sales but missed on earnings. Seemed to be the biggest worry from the market, right? You're taking in more money, but you're actually making less money than the market expected. And that seems to be what they did um, in terms of second quarter revenue now the headline out here all right this is cnbc but beats earnings expectations raises sales outlook on strong demand for top drugs like keytruda now i think they lose that patent yeah in 2028 
So it's almost 2025. They're going to lose the patent for Keytruda in 2028. They're trying to make sure, as they put it, with a handful of new deals under its belt and key drug launches to get ready to lose that patent for that key drug that they hold in 2028. They raised the full-year sales, sales forecast, quite a number, right? 63.4 to 64.4 billion, okay? Slightly higher than the range of 63.1 to 64.3 that the guidance provided by them in April. However, they lowered the adjusted profit guidance to 794 to 804 from a previous forecast of 853 to 865. So what do they do? They're going to take in slightly more money. The range is now 63.4 to 64.4. Previously, they were at 63.1 to 64.3. But they're going to make less money in the same process, right? The updated outlook reflects one-time charges for the company's acquisitions that they're making, respectively. Um, nonetheless, they are lower. But what do they do? They beat on earnings. They beat on revenue. But on a forecast perspective, they guide down on earnings in the market penalizes them and you got Pfizer trading higher you got Merck shares right now MRK is their symbol trading lower down to 123 the headline out there for Pfizer beats earnings estimates hikes the full year outlook and they cut costs is the headline on Pfizer and the market likes that um, they hike their revenue outlook 59.5 to 62.5 that's a much better hike than you had from Merck that's a billion dollars more on the bottom and top of the range that includes 5 billion dollars in expected revenue from the covid vaccine and 3.5 billion from the treatment Paxlovid and the higher outlook reflects its strong performance in the first half of the year and its confidence in the underlying strength of the business, as they put it out there. So they beat as well. 60 versus 46 cents, quite a beat. Revenue, 13.28 versus 12.96. Quite a number. You got Pfizer trading higher and Merck trading lower to kick it off. We get Microsoft after the bell today. So Microsoft kicks it off. Microsoft up by about a buck 25 right now in the pre-market. You're trading at 428. So what do we got? We got Microsoft today. You got Meta out with their numbers tomorrow, and then you get Apple and Amazon on Thursday. Amazon out to about 184 right now. You jump over to Apple shares, trading at 219. All the tech stocks generalizing, but all the tech stocks trading higher with the NASDAQ 100 up by about 60 points right now to kick off the trading session so far. See where we go from there, man. We jump over to the dollar yen, keeping our eye. Talk to our man Teddy Kegstad tomorrow, as we always do. Catching a little bit of a bid from yesterday's low. You go from 140, 153 all the way up to 155. You put this thing on a daily, right? A little bit of a chop right there. Pretty interesting. That Where do we trade down to? We traded down right to the lows of May 3rd. That low, 151.85. You got to a low on the 25th, 151.93. Eight pennies. Eight pennies we got to, and already you're $3 higher from that price point of the dollar yen. Talk about volatility, man. Pretty interesting. But market's holding up relatively well. We jump around to some of the other Magnificent 7 Tesla shares. Trading higher to 234 from 232. Quite a pop to the upside yesterday for Tesla, right? Look at that pop. Um, one of the articles that we're going to talk about, man, I saw this one pop up on social media yesterday. Is this it? Yeah, this is it. So... This is a, an 11 minute, is this it? Yeah, an 11 minute story from the journal, okay? The hidden autopilot data that reveals why Teslas crash. Listen, I'm not a Tesla hater, man, but if you're believing that they're gonna have self-driving vehicles everywhere, you wanna be aware of the facts because people need to trust those cars and I'm not sure that's gonna be the case. We'll talk about Tesla when we get back, folks. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Tigers, it's back. The annual July Tiger Dollar Sale. If you've been wanting to try one of our products, from our stellar newsletters to educative webinars, now is the time. From now until August 1st, we're offering a 20, 30, even a 40% bonus on Tiger Dollar purchases. After being applied to your account, your Tiger Dollars will be used for all purchases. They can be easily transferred and they never expire. If you want to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus from purchasing Tiger Dollars, now is your chance. This is a perfect opportunity to try out a newsletter or save big on your current subscription. This deal is only available until August 1st. So lock in your bonuses fast. Go to TFNN.com today to lock in your bonus. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Morning Market Kickoff is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps up by 13, NASDAQ 100 up by 72. You have Tesla shares up by about a buck, almost $2 to 233.90. And so the one to wrap your brain around on this one, okay, is that self-driving cars are coming, man. They are coming. I mean, the the <laughs> what the world is going to be like for Tommy when he grows up, he's three years old. I don't know. In 13 years, are you going to need a license? I don't know, it's, which is remarkable to say by the time he's 16, right? 13 years from right now, let alone by the time he's 20, 17 years from right now, what the world is going to look like in terms of self-driving vehicles, fleet of cars, etc. But the journal out there, like I said, uh, an interesting video. You got an 11-minute video out there, okay, in their investigation, the hidden autopilot data that reveals why Tesla's crash, talking about this, the cameras, okay? Video and data gathered by the journal from over 200 autopilot crashes reveals that longstanding concerns about Tesla's camera-based technology, which differs from the rest of the industry, are showing up on the roads and putting the public at risk, okay? And... You know, one of the stories that this goes over here, and it's, you know, they're all sad stories, man, when you, when you have this happen. It, the video highlights a fatal accident from May 2021 involving a gentleman, Stephen Hendrickson, who was driving a Model 3 in autopilot mode on his way to work early in the morning, an overturned double trailer. Okay. Do they have the shot? I mean, the shot, if you pull it up, let me see if I can get a, a freeze frame of it in this video even. It kicks it off with it. All right, let me see if I can get the freeze frame of it. And the cameras were just not trained on something like this. Yeah, and here it comes. And you can see the vehicle. I'm going to pause it. Okay, you got an overturned double trailer. And Tesla doesn't recognize it. Okay. Now, the tough part about this whole conversation on self-driving vehicles is there are tens of thousands of people that die 
every year on the roads. Okay, I'll get the the that 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 recent number because it is a startling number. Driving is very dangerous. Okay, so the the argument is going to get made, and it is a just argument that even if 500 people die, even if a thousand people die, it's still 10 times safer, 30 times safer than regular driving if that's all. Okay, but. There's a certain level of having no control that people are not going to be okay with because people want control. So, yes, it might be more dangerous to put somebody in a vehicle and give them the steering wheel than having a computer control it, but that's not going to be okay with people. And that's the one to wrap your brain around. And then you add in, okay, that Elon overpromises and underdelivers. And that's where the trust problem is going to come in, okay? He, um, and listen, no shame to deal, putting his politics ahead of everything, all right? There's almost some kudos to do with that. He knows that it's, it's hurting his companies to a certain degree. He's said many times over, he's not afraid of that, right? He speaks his mind. I got no problem with that, man. Uh, but it all combines up to equal, when you look at the history of his statements with Tesla and over-promising and under-delivering, when it comes time to trust that vehicle, it is going to be a problem for Tesla, and that stock is trading all on that right now, and you have the Wall Street Journal coming out with 10-minute videos of how the data, and then you have a second video in here, okay, uh, yeah, how hackers and mechanics unearthed the data, how they even got this data to do the investigative journalism that they're doing. Tesla closely protects the data of each car's autopilot system. The journal obtained a set of this data as part of its investigation. Here's how it extracted from deep within the car, hackers and mechanics. Unearth that data, that's a three and a half minute video. These are both out, okay? Just right now, that was 12 hours ago, they put this out. They put it out late last night, I think was that video, because I found it last night. When was this one out? 12 hours ago. Yeah, was when these came out. So about 9 o'clock last night, these stories hit. Somehow you got Tesla trading higher. Can't shake Tesla, man, um, at all. But you're going to start seeing these, and they're going to add up because people are going to need to trust these vehicles. And I do not trust these vehicles because, unfortunately, I don't trust Elon Musk because he overpromises and underdelivers. Okay? And that is going to be a big problem when it comes time to trust your life to these vehicles. Because I don't think he has earned that trust at this point, and I'm not going politics, folks, okay? It's become a deal where he, I mean, <laughs> my dad, but he's the Teflon Don besides, you know, the original Don with Trump himself, okay? But it is going to matter when people have to jump in those cars and trust them. The things that he said, he talked about self-driving vehicles when? 2018, right? Saying a fleet's coming by 2020, something like that. Very hard to trust the words that are going to come out of his mouth to say that they're safe and people are going to need them. It's going to be a huge hurdle for this entire industry and he's going to have a problem when it comes time. Okay. So um, if you get a chance, I'll post this video in the den because it's worth watching. And the other sad part about this is they call it autopilot, but it's not autopilot. It's supposed to be self, you know, assisted driving. All right. And I told this story when I went to the Great Smoky Mountains in when was it i think last november or so we rented a ford explorer max and it had lane assist and i was talking about that i actually didn't like it because what it did is it created this false sense of security the the car would keep you in the middle of a lane okay but here's the problem with that folks i would have a mac truck come up to the right side of my vehicle i'd either be passing it or it would be passing me and intuitively, yourself, you always pull yourself a little bit away from that vehicle, right? You don't want to be smack dab in the middle of the lane if you got a Mack truck right on your right that's hugging the lane marker. Well, that's what the self-driving vehicle would do. So you wanted to take over, and you had to be super attentive, and meanwhile, it lulled you into a false sense of security. And obviously, that's what happens with some of these vehicles, right? They're not paying attention. You're supposed to be paying attention at all times. You think Tesla's got it. You're not paying attention to the same degree that you might if you were driving that car yourself. So if you're in any of these vehicles, right, don't lose sight of that, okay? They're not infallible yet. We don't have them yet, 
All right. And if you're cruising on a highway at night, make sure you're paying attention in any of these self-driving vehicles because that's a sad case, man. Um, this guy out here, pretty sure he had kids in that video as I was watching it. An overturned tractor trailer. There it is. Right. And you can see it. Right. There it is. And the Tesla couldn't see it. They're not trained. I mean, it's it's the amount of computations the human brain does, folks. OK, computers are going to get there. It's not a matter of if it's a matter of when. But the computers, the videos, the cameras were not trained to know what that was. And Tesla did not slow down whatsoever and plowed right into it and killed that gentleman. So pay attention on the roads no matter what. Don't trust those cars just yet. I think at some point we will reach the point that they'll be trained on enough data. But we're not there yet. And we're not even close. There's still going to be problems. So pay attention if you're in any of those vehicles with any of those self-driving features. And trust is going to be the big component in this. And I don't think Elon's going to be the best person to deliver that trust to the American people. Listen, you know, he's going to have his fanboys. They're going to jump in those cars. Okay. But mainstream, I don't think people are going to have the trust necessary with the amount of grandiose verbiage that he is used to using at this point. And, um, and he shouldn't because he overpromises and underdelivers. Wall Street Journal with a pretty interesting one. I posted that in the den. We're coming back for the opening bell, folks. Don't go away. The you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento Friday, July 12th and Friday, July 26th, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern Time for three hours of live trading. For this month only, use promo code LarryJuly24 at checkout to save $50 on your first month's subscription. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. Going over some of the other news of the day. So you got Delta. They're lawyering up, and they're going after CrowdStrike and Microsoft. CrowdStrike. Look at that action, man. That was probably on the news last night that they're going to get sued, I guess. You dive from 260 down to 246. I saw something up there. Kramer may be saying, yeah, there's probably Max Payne done. They're probably done. That was probably the signal to short that thing. It was probably going lower. I get sarcasm. But nonetheless, down another 5%. The pain does just not end. For this equity and it probably will end eventually okay um this is not going to be the end of the company i don't believe all right they're too big of a company for it to be the end all but boy it's quite a give back man you trade from 92 up to 398 you're back at a 50 percent retracement of that level and you've probably gotten to 200 i mean if you're looking to get in this thing maybe 200 that's where i look you still got some pain you're down by six percent look at you dropping on the opening right now because what's going to happen here is let me see if i have the article pulled up i think i do they going after them? No. And this is for some context here, folks. This is the front page of the journal. And that is where they positioned the Tesla video. Okay? This is not a small investigative piece that they have going on. And it's not a liberal news organization. It's a conservative news organization, the Wall Street Journal, run by Rupert Murdoch and his family. And they have in-depth analysis for Tesla. I'm just, you know... It's it's a, it's it's a big one out there, and it's front page on the journal this morning with a lot of else going on. But nonetheless, um, yeah, I guess I don't have that one pulled up, but it is Tessa. Do I have it? No. Okay, but nonetheless, yeah, I was reading it this morning. I guess I don't have it up. But Delta, they're going after Microsoft and CrowdStrike. Microsoft right now flat. You got CrowdStrike down, as I said, six percent. You jump over to Delta this morning. Delta up by about one percent, trading. 350 to 500 million dollars is what that error cost them and they're going to come for some of that money in the back end from CrowdStrike from Microsoft and they got quite a lawyer um they got the lawyer who actually defended Microsoft for antitrust they got the lawyer out there who's been in some political cases they got a big shot of course they do for a case like that and nonetheless so they're going after CrowdStrike they're going after Microsoft we'll see how that plays out as well all right talking about rate cuts you got uh Goldman their man Solomon he's now changing course Two Fed cuts up to in 2024, just a couple months ago. He would say there'd be no rate reductions in 2024. It's coming. As I said at the beginning of the program, folks, it is coming. Goldman CEO David Solomon said one or two rate cuts later this year are looking increasingly likely after predicting just two months ago that there would be no rate reductions in 2024. And listen, he is not on the Fed, okay? But just a general consensus of where the market is right now and what the consensus is in the market and what is coming down the line. That is what's coming down the line, folks. Rate cuts coming. They're beginning in September. We get the jobs number on Friday, okay? Non-farm payrolls out on Friday. So that's, that's you know, one huge data point. There's always the case that we could get a shock and a half somehow, but I don't expect that one's coming. You jump over to McDonald's shares, and yeah, so Mickey D's, they get quite a pop yesterday on their earnings on the earnings call. Seems like the premise of they're coming back to, to value meals, and the market's saying, you know what, maybe that's what may save us. The only thing I'll tell you is we got to break back through this channel line. All right, you're looking for McDonald's. I would let it get above this point from where you are right now because I talked about it before. Put this thing on a monthly. You go back to where we were in 2015, a pretty well-defined channel line, and you are bumping right up against that channel line right now. Our man, Bud Rolfs, I always think about him, especially when you get a test like this. If you're looking to go short, this is the area, man. This is the area. You break through the channel line. You come back. I'll put it on a little bit shorter term time frame on the weekly. You can see, right? Where did we just go? Right to the channel line. You break below it. You come back up. You test the channel line. You break away. You fail. That would be the short. So critical area for McDonald's right now. But it is going to be interesting to see if they can pull it off. And they got the right idea because they need to court lower-end consumers. That's how they got to do it, man. They need to win over lower-income consumers. McDonald's is not going to be a company that makes money by courting middle-income to higher-income earners. That's not the case, folks, okay? That's not who they are. That's not how they make the most money. The way they make the money is something like the $5 value meal. The question is now, how are they going to make money off the $5 value meal with the cost of inputs, right? What is going to be the quality of those meals that you're pumping out at $5 when you think about what you're competing against and the cost of some of the competitors that you have out there and the cost of inputs in this market? I mean, what are you going to get for $5? We'll find out, but they're going to try and make it happen. Um, nonetheless, 
on that premise. McDonald's trading a little bit higher, continuing on that one as of yesterday. All right. What else we got going on? We talked about Pfizer, Merck. Let's check in on how they're trading following their earnings, MRK. Merck shares, yeah, they trade lower on guidance for earnings. Look at that. They drop on the open. And as I mentioned, right, the max pain situation in the market right now is you beat on sales, you miss on earnings. Now, they beat on sales and earnings, but then on forecast, they 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 missed on earnings. They guided down on earnings. Not what you want. Companies are getting penalized dearly when you're guiding down on earnings. You jump over to Pfizer, still positive, but they give back a portion of those gains, positive by about seven tenths percent. As I mentioned, you got Microsoft shares uh, with their earnings. Microsoft up by about one tenth percent out there. And we get Meta out with their numbers tomorrow. Ahead of that, you got Meta catching a bid up by 1%. And then Amazon and Apple, the main events. Amazon, they trade higher than lower. They get back some of those gains, still up by about 6 tenths percent. And Apple shares up by about 3 tenths percent right now. Let's see how NVIDIA is trading. NVIDIA trading at about 111.88 right now. They're positive by 2 tenths percent to kick things off. We'll see where we go from there. We check back in on CrowdStrike. Yeah. CrowdStrike trading down more than 5% right now, and some of those airlines, Delta, up by about 7 tenths. These car makers, man, Ford, that's quite a chart, quite a chart longer term. Ford up by about 5%. We get Carvana earnings this week. Forget what day, but we do get them. Boy, this is quite a chart, man. You want a chart. How about it, man? From 3 bucks up to 130 bucks. Not bad. Still well off the highs. Is 376 the high? It is. There's your high. So you're trading at 130 Quite a roller coaster ride for Carvana up to 376, down to three bucks. You're trading at 130. I think they have their numbers out this week as well. JetBlue, are they out with their numbers? Oh, there you go. There's a pop. Yeah, they are out with their numbers. JetBlue catches a little bit of a pop up by 10%. Yeah, be careful of this one, though. Uh, 750, the upper range right here for JetBlue. And you see, we were up there on their last earnings before you fell off. You're trading at 652, though. You're up by 10% for JetBlue. There's a pop for you on JetBlue shares. And on the markets, Dow catches a little bit of a bid on the opening bell. Dow up by 94. You got crude trading with the 74 handle, as I mentioned. Look at that give back, man. Crude's probably on its way back to the recent lows, 72.48. We're trading right now at 74.87 for the price of crude. You jump over to the dollar index DXY as we wrap things up. Dollar index right now, 104.66. And yeah, dollar gives it up a little bit. We were up to 104.79 when I kicked off the program there. And that's helping gold a little bit. Gold up to 24.38, up by $13 for the gold contract. And we check in on notes and bonds. The 10-year, 111.14, up by three ticks. Not bad, man. I had a Fed day, Fed day tomorrow, and expect the verbiage to be strong. There's going to be no doubt, folks. The market knows it, right? You get the 10-year yield sitting at about 4.2% right now. The market knows it. The cuts are coming. Just how many, how fast. The conversation's going to shift. So when we get two or three cuts, where do we go from there? That's where the conversation is going to shift. All right, folks, stay tuned. Jacob Shoup's coming back to fill up the pro, fill up, um, finish up the program. I got to check out a little early today, but he's coming back live. He's got some good analysis. Stay tuned for Jacob, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a great Tuesday, everybody. TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer. 
the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. What's going on, folks? This is Jacob Shub. I'm stepping in for Tommy O'Brien uh, for the last segment of the show. Let's take a look at where we're at right now. Uh, we're about what? 12 minutes after the open, up about 0.43% in the E-mini. The Russell Futures up a little bit after a down day. Uh, the NQs about 0.5%. The Dow Futures up about 0.36%. A gold contract up about 037 And then let me see here. Excuse me, the gold contract up about 062 Silver up one. And then copper off about 075 Now, I was reading something on Bloomberg uh, about a lot of funds closing pretty bullish trades on copper. Right. And the idea behind this is that, you know, copper is really driven by Chinese consumption. Right. You have some weird issues going on in China where they're dealing with deflation. Now they're back on track to some certain extent. Um, but it seems like there is some kind of fear that the Chinese are not going to be buying as much uh, copper. You have a lot of people saying that that was totally overbought. Uh, if we take a look at the chart here. There's something like in May. I mean, you can see. You know, well, we're pretty down like around this area in June, you had a big sell off May, but really even in April, you had it super high, at least at the futures, at least for contract. And the the, the underlying uh, price of the metal was extraordinarily high in May as well. Uh, and so apparently they're kind of closing out of that, which might partly explain uh, the kind of I'm looking at crude oil right now. Good Lord. There we go. That makes more sense. Let's look at here on copper. You have, uh, you have a high peak over here in May of $5.19. And of course, the base metal uh, was extraordinarily high as well. Uh, and you have a, kind of a slow burn off from that. And so that kind of makes sense. I still think copper uh, is, is a great play. This is this idea of like a portfolio, uh, you know, that's future proof. You know, no doubt copper is going to be a part of that. Now, again, there's an argument that the tech is getting better at finding copper. And so therefore, the prices won't go too much higher. Um, but I think that's more guesswork by people. In, in reality, it is getting more difficult to find copper, and uh, copper is in nearly every uh, electrical component. Uh, so pretty, I think it's a pretty safe bet to say over time, copper is, is a pretty solid uh, look. Now let's look at AMD. They have earnings after the bell. It's up about 0.68%. Now this is gonna be, I mean, this is gonna be pretty telling. If AMD foresees, you know, future growth, right? Let's talk about this a little bit. So they're set to report uh, second quarter earnings after the bell on Tuesday. 
Uh, AMD in the prior quarter said that data center revenue increased 80% year over year to 2.3 billion thanks to the sales of its instinct graphics processing units and uh, the IPIC uh, central processing unit, that's the CPU. For the second quarter, Wall Street is anticipating adjusted earnings uh, per share of 68 cents on revenue of 5.7 billion. Uh, that would be a solid improvement from the same quarter last year with adjusted to EPS of 0.58% and a revenue of 5.4 billion. But the real question is, is what does the future growth look like? You have NVIDIA dropping a little bit. Again, I think that's probably just some profit taking. These companies are here to stay, uh, no doubt, still at a 2.6 trillion market cap, but uh, we're, we're definitely moving down. And that's to be anticipated, or expected rather. I mean, you had this wild, wild move in this stock. And, you know, before the split, I mean, you're still cooking around, you know, a thousand, uh, which is, you know, pretty high for that stock. I don't know. It remains to be seen if you see a larger sell off. I, I think that they're so central to this whole build out that we're seeing uh, that NVIDIA is probably going to stay uh, around levels like this for quite a while. Uh, however, I do think that if AMD reports bad uh, let's say outlook for the quarters going forward, you're going to see a major hit in a lot of the chip stocks itself. Now, Tommy was talking a little bit about CrowdStrike and Delta uh, seeking some compensation uh, for that big outage. It's kind of strange that they're seeking compensation from Microsoft as well. I I'd be curious to see what their angle is on that. You know, obviously the law firm that they're hiring is <laughs> extraordinarily competent. Um, as Tommy said, you know, he, he spoke about them representing Microsoft in the past. Um, but I, I would just be curious to see because it wasn't really Microsoft's fault, right? This was CrowdStrike doing something weird and skirting uh, kind of regulations that Microsoft had on companies that add, you know, drivers um, to the kernel. There's an argument to be made that they totally knew what CrowdStrike was doing by not making actual changes to the driver, but changes to what the driver uh was interacting with on higher rings. Uh, I think that in itself is, I mean, that's that was clearly designed to, to skirt the regulations that Microsoft had. So maybe they do have some liability in that, um, but it'll be interesting to see. Additionally, this morning, Microsoft is having a lot of outages on Azure uh, and Office, which is actually pretty insane. Uh, not a good time for them either. Let's see here. The issue is impacting multiple Microsoft 365 services and features. The company said in a post on X Tuesday, uh, earlier this month, obviously you had CrowdStrike going on, and basically the Azure servers are just having uh, some issues right now. Uh, see if there's anything else kind of pertinent with this. We're investigating reports, this is a global issue, of course it's with Azure, so yeah. Experience timeouts connecting to Azure servers. What is, like, crazy to think about, you know, I, uh, one of the reasons why I'm like, bullish on Microsoft on the long term, especially because of Azure, is obviously the utilization of the AI, but because a lot of people are moving to it. They, a lot of people want that single suite. And this is where you have to kind of do like a risk analysis in your business, right? If you, you get a single suite because if something goes wrong, you have to call one person, right? But if something goes wrong, you, you have nothing else going on and all operations uh, have halted. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see, obviously not really a major uh, reaction from the market on this, or usually never is, unless it's something massive uh, like CrowdStrike, uh, regardless. That's what we have going on today, at least in the, the tech arena. Let's see if anything else we have for tech. No, but we can talk a little bit about Bitcoin. I spoke about it yesterday. Uh, you have that down, you see what the price is, I think roughly around 66000 yeah, you have 66,473. Now this is uh, basically, you know, movement out uh, from the US government, right? Uh, they have a big Silk Road kind of haul. Uh, let's see, the slide came out the US government moved 2 billion worth of Bitcoin, raising concerns, for, uh, excuse me, concerns of potential selling pressure. And then Solana led major losses, dropping by 6% that reversed Monday's gain. Solana was uh, rolling. You know what's so crazy, actually? The reason why I know the Solana is my friend's kid. Uh, she's like nine years old, I think, but um, she goes to like a special program school 
um, it's not like a public school, but it's not private per se. You have to take a test to get in, and, and they do kind of some different, um, how do you say it? Like, uh, I can't think of the word for it. Uh, but the lessons are a little bit different. I don't know why I can't think of the word. But the point is, is they do a bunch of different stuff, right? So they learn like Greek, they learn the classics, but additionally, they're doing uh, investing as well. And it was funny because I was looking at her portfolio and she actually was like doing okay. And I was like, what are you doing? Because I'm just buying anything that's going up. But she actually had Solana in it and it was roaring yesterday or Solana Mimic. Um, so I'm interested to see today what her portfolio is. Folks, uh, stay tuned. We have a short segment right after this break. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks, for a short segment. This is Jacob Sheep stepping in for Tommy O'Brien. We have Basil Chapman uh, up next. Strongly recommend it. Checking that out. If you haven't watched him yet. Uh, we're looking at Pfizer right now of about 0.86%. Uh, uh, they have some good uh, first revenue growth, excuse me, first quarter revenue growth. Uh, it's pretty nice. You had some issues uh, kind of going into the future uh, regarding uh, COVID-19 vaccines not being uh, as in demand. It seems like they're doing okay. They reported second quarter adjusted EPS of 0.6, excuse me, 60 cents. That was down 11% year over year, but that did beat consensus, which was 46 cents. Uh, the U.S. drug maker reported sales of 13.28 billion, which is up 2% year over year. Uh, the increase primarily 
uh, was due to growth contributions from several of acquired uh, products, key inline products, and recent commercial launches. Now, excluding contributions um, from Cormody and Paxlovid, uh, which are both losses, uh, revenues reached $12.8 billion, and that increased 14% operationally. In the second quarter of 2024, um, Cormonades revenue uh, of $195 million, that declined 87%. And Paxlovid uh, revenues increased 79% to $251 million. Okay, the blood thinners were doing well. Not so bad. And they launched a multi-year cost-cutting initiative to save approximately $1.5 billion by 2027. Uh, so good for Pfizer, especially if you're holding that bag. You're pretty high, even on the year. Let's see. It's going to be like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, at 30.86 right now. So it's still hanging in there for sure. Now, something that's kind of interesting, obviously we have the Fed meeting tomorrow, and we'll see what he has to says, uh, say about potential rate cuts uh, in September, which would be pretty solid. Um, but I found this really interesting. This is NPR. This is a little short story. Inflation is pinching Americans, but they are still splurging on their pets. Now, the pet industry is insane. If you're looking to maybe make a portfolio uh, that's either inflation or really recession-proof as well, um, probably buying some stuff regarding your pets is, is pretty insane. It's probably a pretty good bet. Although, I will say I'm watching uh, my friend's cat and... You know, she doesn't care about the $30, $40 toys. I just like gave her some cardboard and she tore it up and have a great time. So I don't know, maybe that's a that's a bearish perspective. Folks, thank you so much for joining me uh, for my short fill-in. We have uh, Basil Chapman up next.